Hey everybody, welcome to Bible Time. Craig here. Thanks for joining me today. Hey, we've had a lot of new subscribers, followers over the last couple days. I think a lot of people from TikTok are coming our way, so that's super fun. So thanks for joining. Um, I just want to make sure everybody is crystal clear on what exactly it is that I'm doing here. Uh, the goal of these videos is not about me, and it's not that I'm teaching you. Um, I haven't studied these passages out. I'm not doing a lecture or a class, uh, any of that. I, I believe in all of those things. I'm a preacher uh, and a teacher, but that's not what we're doing here. What we're doing here is I'm simply reading the Bible the way that I would on my own in my house. Normally, I'd have a paper Bible, and I'd be marking up with a regular pen, but I just simply want to show people what it's like to just read the Bible every day, to set aside some time for devotional reading, which is different than study. Study is important, but what I'm talking about is, is approaching the Word strictly or primarily for a relational outcome. So the, the hope is that through reading the Bible and listening to the Holy Spirit, we'll grow in a relationship with Jesus, our love and affection for Him, and let that turn into obedience to Him. And then we put aside the time for study and all of those things uh, for a different time. So that's what this is. If you want to stay updated, make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell, as they say. So we're, we're picking up in Hebrews chapter 12, starting at verse 3. But just because verse 1 and 2 is so good, I want to just read it. I won't commentate on it too much. That would be yesterday's video with my six-year-old son, if you want to check that out. It's, it's a fun one. So anyway, but it's just so good, I just want to read it. After 11 chapters of describing how Jesus is superior to basically everything and then also offering some warnings to not neglect the salvation that he's offered to us, the author uh, turns the corner like a lot of other biblical authors do and says, therefore, in light of all of those things, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith or accomplisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, not just happiness, but joy, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So good. All right, with that, let's jump into the new content. He goes on to say this, Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you forgotten of the exhortation that addresses you as sons? So before we go on, I'm going to point out a few things. Consider him. I love this invitation. It's one of my favorite invitations to give to people. Just instead of saying, come on, accept it, believe it. But in, in this generation, it seems like people need a, a softer invitation. Would you just consider him? I think even the other day um, in one of my videos on TikTok, I, I was making a plea. Would you just consider Jesus and, and who is he and making him the Lord of your life? And this is a great invitation. Consider him. But I think it's even more than that, more than just like a soft, like, would you just consider him? But this is telling believers who are going through it, who are struggling, who are, who are facing something, that in, in our mind, when we're facing these challenges, to think about him, to consider him all through that. Consider him. You're, you're feeling the persecution or you're feeling the struggle or you're feeling whatever, that as you're going through what you're facing in life, Consider him, consider him, think about him, remember him, remember what he went through because he endured from sinners hostility against himself. He endured, consider him who went through what he went through, which is what? Which is uh, the enduring the cross. Consider the fact that he went to the cross with joy in order to get to us. He wasn't happy about it. He wasn't pumped about it. He asked in the garden, Father, if there's any way that this could pass in front of me and this cup and basically if there's any other way you know then let's do that but he said nevertheless not my will but yours be done 
and there was a deeper uh, joy in him to face the cross for our sake. And so the author is saying, as you go through whatever you're going through, consider him because he faced so much more. He faced so much more because in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. And so uh, as we think about our struggle against sin, and, and uh, so let's just put aside like persecution. Let's put aside like relational issues with other people or you know your work issues or your finance issues just let's just take just the one issue of our holiness and whether we're walking in sin or whether we're fighting against that sin or not he's saying consider jesus because he faced everything and he poured out his blood for you and you yet even in your struggle against sin to try and overcome sin you haven't even yet suffered the place of shedding blood like and i guess what he's trying to say is there are certain things that we all struggle with in life and nobody's better than anybody else. We all have our own flavor of sin. So it's not about that. It's not about me being more holy than anybody. We all face things, and there's but there's battles that we all have that God expects us to fight. If, it's, if we're giving ourselves to something that's other than his kingdom and his will and his way, that's called sin. And just like we've talked about in chapters above, chapter 10, chapter nine, we cannot keep walking in sin deliberately. We have to fight against that. There's a big difference between somebody that says, I'm just gonna give myself over to sin and somebody that says, no, I'm fighting against that. Even if it takes my whole life, I'm gonna fight to overcome that sin because if God doesn't want it, I don't want it. Even if I'm struggling with it, even if I fall into temptation, I'm fighting, I'm fighting, I'm fighting. And so I wanna encourage you. This scripture is encouraging you don't let the world convince you that that sin has overcome you, that you can't uh, fight it against it, that you'll never succeed. He's saying, man, come on. You, you haven't died for this thing yet. You haven't laid down your life. You haven't probably even shed blood. So how much are you willing to fight to obey Jesus? Not out of legalism, but out of a place of relationship and loving who he is. He is the king above all kings. He is worthy of everything. We can fight to follow his will and his way. And I always want to remember and point out when it says, so that. So he's saying, consider him so that you may not grow weary and faint-hearted. So this is, this is practical. This is like, this is a way that we can guard ourselves against growing weary, against fighting against sin. It's consider him. Think about him, fall in love with him, remember him. Always think about Jesus and that will help us in, in our fight to run our race with perseverance, run our race with endurance. And part of our race with endurance is laying aside every weight and every sin that clings so closely. So keep fighting. I don't know what you're fighting against, but keep fighting, keep fighting. continues with this thought. Have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? Sons, children of God, not, not just, you know, outcasts, not just whatever. We're children of God. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. This is a beautiful passage that our generation needs to get discipline is a good thing reproof is a good thing discipline comes to the one the ones that he loves chastisement is a good thing man this is so hard for our generation my age and younger we hate discipline we we rage against the machine we rage against authority we rage against anybody that is gonna try and tell us anything different than what we wanna do, what we, what we wanna say, what we wanna believe. Anybody that comes against the way that we've decided, we just rage against it. That's our culture at large, painted with a broad brush. And so, so let's take away the broad brush. Because for right now in this moment, you and I don't need to think about all of them. 
I want to invite you just for a second to think about you. Think about the things that you're facing in life. The things that you know God has called you to. Are you growing weary in that fight or are you excelling in that fight? Are you considering him? Are you finding joy in being his servant? And are you receiving with joy, thankful even, for his discipline, his reproof, and his chastisement? Like, is there something in you that says, yes, the great gardener is taking those sharp shears and he's, he's cutting, but I know he's cutting off the dead, the dead leaves that aren't bearing fruit. think that it's uh, a subject that's worthy to just pause and consider. Matter of fact, I wanted to read more, but I just feel that it's really important that we just stop right there. Sometimes it's so easy to get in the habit of just wanting to read a whole chapter or however much, so we feel like we've accomplished something, but When God starts to speak, when the scripture starts to come alive on a subject, I think it's important that we stop and just allow the spirit the time that he needs. So I actually just want to give you a few minutes. I like putting the clock up because then people don't just tune off of the video. Um, Would you hang with me? Not really with me, to be honest. Would you give the Holy Spirit five more minutes? Would you read through this passage a few more times? And would you just ask, Holy Spirit, is there anything that you need to reveal to me on this subject? Is there anything that I'm falling short in or that I'm just tired in? And ask him for strength. Is there is there areas that I've rejected the discipline of the Lord And by the way, the discipline of the Lord sometimes comes through leaders in our life, pastors, mentors, parents, friends, people that out of love are trying to correct some behavior in us. It's not always because somebody hates you or they they think they're better than you. People sometimes have a real love and they're, they're trying to bring correction to us in order to make us better, in order to honor God. And so I just feel that we should take some time and consider this passage and please don't, please don't sign off for this video. Let's give the Holy Spirit a couple minutes in prayer and allow him to speak to us and ask him, what do you want me to do today or this week? And I just want to pray for you right now that each one of us would have the courage that whatever it is that he asks us, that we would walk in it. And so, Lord, we commit this time to you. Just a few moments, and we invite you to speak in regards to the truth in this passage. Lord, that we would all uh, think about you more often, more deeply, that we consider you, that we consider that our battle against sin or or any, any, any other battle that we have in this life is worthy of fighting because we know what you want for us. And I just pray in this area of discipline, endurance, all of these things, overcoming sin, walking in your ways, that you would strengthen every person that's reading this and listening to this in the power of your Holy Spirit strengthen them to accomplish, to do anything that you ask us to do, that you would give us courage to obey whatever it is that you speak to us. And so we approach you now in prayer and ask that you would speak to each one of us individually, just exactly whatever you want to say in Jesus' name.